of current law. That's chapter three now. Now, before I talk about Kirsha of current law, let's talk about two, uh, one thing, a point, because he's going to use the word point here, a node. A point at which two or more elements have a common connection is called a point or a node. So uh, a junction that will connect two or more element, two or more element is a node. So let me draw some circuits. If you look at this, So it's a point at which two or more elements have common connection. So looking at that picture, this is a node right here. It connects one, two, three, four pieces. This is a node. It connects this to this to this to that. That is a node. It connects this to this. Two or more element. This is one node. It looks like two nodes, but that's really one node. It's the same node because there are no elements between this and that. So that's why the whole thing is highlighted pink as one single node. It has to be two or more elements. Between them, there are no elements, so this is not two separate nodes. This is only one node. This is a node that connects this to this to this to that. That's one node, this and that. So this picture and that picture is the same thing. They just made it look different. So the third node, the one that has, is, it's, it's connecting Here? Yeah, that one right there. That connects to uh, two or more elements. There's one element, there's another one. Okay. That's a node. It has to be two or more. Now, would it make any difference if that weren't there? What do you mean, the, what wasn't there? If the node wasn't there, would it look different? Like, what if it was just one wire? Would that really make a difference? It's still adding. I'm not sure if you ask them, like, the yep. they, they will number them. So I don't know if you ask them the question, like, let's say I have this circuit. There's a resistor here. And when I draw these, I go like this. Where are my nodes? This is a node right here. Because that connects this to this to this to that. This is a node that connects these guys. This is a node that connects these two. Now, I can redraw this whole problem here. That's the same thing. There's still, if this is node one, this is still node one. All of that's node one. It's not a two separate so nodes. Really, so nodes, what they, looks like what they do is they It's a point. Up. It's a point that connects two or more. Yeah. This is node two, for example. That's node two. This is node three. Now, I could draw on the same problem here. That's the same circuit. All three of them are the same circuit. Now this is here. All of that is node one. All of that. That's the same as this, the same as this, the same as this. This one. If you were to cut out the two resistors in the center of the circuit, you still have three nodes. Correct. If you made it one resistor, it's still three. This is node two. If you take them out completely, there's one node here, there's another node here, there's a node here, yes. Yep. And this is node three. So notice I changed the look of it. It looks like different circuits, but it's not. It has to connect an element. So if you go, what about between these guys? How can it be this is not node, that's not node. Between them, there are no elements. So this, this, and that's all the same thing. The other thing you're going to hear is the word loop when we talk about Kirchhoff current law. A path, a loop. But we'll wait on that. So Kirchhoff current law, that's the first law we're going to be looking at. We call that, by the way, in circuits, we call that KCL. That's a common name. It's not just me calling it. Kirchhoff current law, KCL. And there's Kirchhoff voltage law, KVL. Kirchhoff current law says what? The algebraic sum 
of the currents entering any node is zero. The algebraic sum of the currents entering any node is zero. Translation. Let's look at that. This is a node. I normally don't use these markers because they bleed through, but I figure I'll finish them. Let's assume we have that node with these branches. Here we have a current coming in. We'll call it I sub 1. This is I sub 2. This is I sub 3. This is I sub 4. Notice I made I, I sub 3 leaving. Again, let me write the definition of K KCL. KCL, Kirchhoff Current Law. The algebraic sum of all the currents entering any node is zero. That's the KV, a KCL. So let's look at the currents entering the nodes. What do we have? I sub 1. What else go into that node? I sub 2. I sub 2. And I sub 4. I sub 4. What about I sub 3? Would be negative? Would you be That's subtracting it? Plus negative I sub 3. Because you can change the direction of I sub 3 by going and going in and change the sign of that instead of I sub, three, I sub 3, negative I sub 3. So now the sum of them is 0. If you do the math on that, what do you have? I sub 1, I sub 2, I sub 4 equals what? I sub 3. What does that mean? The current going in. should equal what? The current coming out. All the current going to the node should equal all the current leaving that node. So a lot of times the way I write Kirchhoff current law is that the sum of the current going in should equal, instead of using a minus, sum of the current coming out. I don't want to use minuses and pluses, so I go in equals out. Think of a current as water. If you get these hoses, one, two, three, coming into a junction and attach out, whatever that water comes in has to equal the water coming out. Otherwise, if you have more coming in than going out, what will happen to that hose? It's going to explode. It's going to have a balloon and it finds it's going to explode. So whatever goes in has to equal whatever comes out. And that's what Kirchhoff current law, KCL. Let's take some examples and see if we can go through them and solve some of these circuits using KCL. So I have this problem. I have a source of 10 volts going through resistor R1. We have no idea what R1 is. Doesn't tell us that. We have another resistor here, R2. We have another resistor here. R3, and we have a current source here, 5A.
And it says, assume that this current going up, going through this source, the current going up here, assume that's 2 amps. And assume this current here, it's 2 amps. Can you tell me what this current I is? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Let's identify our nodes. There's one node here. Let me number them a different color. There's one node. There is another node, all of this. It connects our two one or two more elements, and there's one down here. That's three. For any one of them, any one of these nodes, the current in equals the current out. So at node one, the current in equals the current out. You have two amps going in, and there's only one way to exit. Which way? That's this way. That has to be what? Two amps. Two going in, has to be two out. So two going in, that has to equal the current through resistor one. R through the resistor one has to be two amps. That's why I wrote two amps here. Now with this node, node 2, the current in equals the current out. What is going in to that node? The 2 amps plus something else going in. The 5 amps, yep. This and this go into it. What's leaving that node? Seven. This five, this seven. I know, but in terms of the symbols on the diagram. Two amps plus I. Yep. This and that. So you do the math. What's I equal to? Five amps. Uh, you could have went directly to node 3 instead of 1 and 2. You could have jumped to node 3. And you go, what is going to that node 3? That's the bottom one. What's going to it? Going to it's the 2 amps plus what? I. And what's leaving, coming out of it? This 2 amp leaving it going up there. And this 5 amps going up there, leaving it. So what's I equal to? 3 amps. Anyway, you slice it. I is 3 here, right? Not 5. Doing the math. Wait. Oh, it's 5. It's 5. Yeah. yeah. I is not 3. Yeah, it's 5. 2 and 5, 7. Take away 2. That's 5. I know one of them is not right. So anyway, you slice it, which node doesn't really matter. That's Kirchhoff current law.